Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where we're working together step by step through each of the ABRSM theory grades. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets and you can download those in US letter or A4 to accompany each step of this series. You'll find a page there with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also find information about the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guide, how to take your ABRSM music theory exam. It's full of tips and techniques on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to make use of the time in the best possible way on exam day when you're working through your exam paper. So if you go to SharonBill.com you'll find it's all there. If you can give me a like, that would be super, and please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. I have lots more in store. And now we're going to make a start on paper C of the 2015 Grade 5 Theory Booklet. So this is the last paper of the exam session of 2015. So if you turn with me to page 16, we'll have a look at question 1. So although there are some differences now between this paper uh, from a few years ago and the newly revised 2018 exam papers uh, and from that onwards, um, it's still a really, really valuable resource. I always suggest that you have a go at this on your own. It doesn't matter if you go wrong. It's always better to learn by your mistakes. Best make your mistakes now rather than when you're in the exam. Always write in pencil. I use a mechanical pencil just so it stays sharp and neat. And then you've got your trusty eraser to hand so that you can rub out any mistakes and have another go and learn more thoroughly that way. And so I'm hoping you've had a go of this. And so question one, all of the questions on this page refer back to this little extract here. And question one tells us that it begins on the first bit of the bar. There are some changes in time signatures, so we need to keep our eyes peeled. And we need to put in the correct time signatures in three places, marked with a little star here, here and here. So we've just got a bit of counting to do. So we need to decide uh, what number we're counting in. And, uh, and then how many beats we're counting in that unit value. So here, uh, don't be put off by the fact that there's a triplet. Remember that just means three in the time of two. So we're just counting two quaver beats there, two eighth notes. We've got one here. Those two make one. And we've got one here. So I would guess we can't count this in um, crotchet beats or quarter notes because that would leave a quaver or an eighth note hanging over because if you tried to do that you've still got this odd one left so we're going to have to count that in quaver beats or eighth notes so that's the only way we can do this and then just one, two, three, four, five over eight. Easy to count, not necessarily so easy to play but that's not our problem today and so let's move on to this next one. So here we have a group of three, here we have a group of three, and then we've got this odd one here missing. So I think we're still counting in eighth notes or quaver beats. We can see that this dotted crotchet, this dotted quarter note with the dot gives us a group, a group of three. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then this odd one, seven. So we're in seven over eight. Again, easy peasy to count. Now here we can see we've got a group of three here and a group of th three here. So we're in a nice uh, regular compound time signature there. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six over eight, which means that there are two groups of three. So that's uh, soon done. You've just got to count carefully. So the next question we're asked to write as a brief or a double whole note the enharmonic equivalent of the note marked X. So that's this one here. Notice we're in the treble clef. So here we have an E double flat. And so if we just look at that, E flat flat could also be called a D. So that's the most obvious one I would suggest. However, you could also call it a C double sharp to get you to that same point. 
so either one of those will do make sure you get the correct pitch this is the E double flat so the D would be there that's our brief or double whole note alternatively you could call it this C double sharp it's just easier to visualize that with a sketch of a piano keyboard you always get scrap paper in an exam so I would just sketch that out so you can see E double flat or is D or C double sharp is the same thing it's much easier to visualize on a piano keyboard even if you don't play piano so then moving on look at the following extract and then answer the questions below we need to describe the chords here and here marked A and B and we need to say whether it's chord 1, 2, 4 and 5 and we also see, need to say which position it's in we're told helpfully that the key is F major so let's just uh, map out our choices before we look any further so chords 1, 2, 4 and 5 are the chords that we're going to be looking for so in F major chord 1 is based on an F so first degree of the scale second is G a, B, of course I know it's B flat but your key signature uh, takes care of that, no need to worry about that and C, first, third, fifth, F, A, C, if you find that difficult just again refer to your piano keyboard first, second, third, fourth, fifth <clears throat> so G, B, D, B, D, F, C, E, G and a little double check, you know you've gone uh, correctly because if that's the first third the fifth that's the basis for your chord five so you should see that reappear here for the basis of chord five and then we can also just prepare and think root position first inversion second inversion so now we've got all the information we need and so all the thinking's done we've just got to choose what fits best so here we have a bass clef and treble clef a b an F and a D so that's going to be chord 4 which has got BDF and because the B is in the bass we're in root position so chord 4A just 4 on its own also means root position but you might as well pop the A in just to be um, super clear about the fact that you know what you're doing there so here we go next one so chord B we've got a C an A an F and a C so that's chord one, F, A, C. And because the C is in the bass, it's a one, C. Because we've got the C at the bass, then we've got F, A, C as the whole notes of the chord. So there we go, that's job done. Next one. So now we are asked to rewrite the last chord, of the extract, so that it sounds at the same pitch, but also using the, uh, but now using the alto clef. The important thing here is make sure you get the same pitch, don't jump any octaves. Keep middle C as your anchor point. So remember to put in the key signature, so we've got B flat, so C, B flats. And then let's look at the chord that we're looking So The last right hand chord of the extract is here. So here's our reference point of middle C. C, D, E is one, two, three above and then one, two, three above that. So C, D, E, that's our chord base here. The bottom of that is E below, uh, above middle C. And then here is the third above the G. And then if you notice, this has got stems separately. So we will do the same here. Stem going up, stem going down there. So we're breaking the rules of stems by not having them both going down because we're following their format of having one stem up and one stem down. So that's the end of that question. Uh, we'll look at the next question in the next video. I do hope that that's been helpful to you. Uh, I hope that you're enjoying it and I hope it's of benefit to your studies. I'm certainly enjoying working through it with you. I really do love uh, working through music theory and I hope that that joy uh, carries over to you. 
please if you can give me a like that would be super and do subscribe to my channel to keep updated there's lots more in store and please do visit SharonBill.com and have a browse around my website and make use of all of the resource and information that's available there to help you thanks for watching and I'll see you next time bye